Okay, so we got our thing here, and I'm actually going to minimize that for now. But we've got our uh, OBJ down here, and I'm going to open it in Blender first just to check to make sure all the geometry is good real quick. Um, I don't do this in every case, but I think it'll be, you know, just depending on time for me usually, but I think it'll probably be a step Alex will want to take to just open it in whatever his preferred 3D program is. Um, one one thing that happens sometimes is sometimes the artists didn't think to check for back face culling, which is just like sometimes chunks of the mesh are see-through because the normals on those uh, faces are inverted. Here we go. And then it's going to be really slow to open and import. Okay, that didn't, that didn't do anything. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, here we go. Um, so, and... So we've opened this and it's this is something that can kind of be skipped here because uh, we're going to end up um, doing something that will do this anyways in in Unity. Um, but I'm going to do it here too because it, it'll actually be a little bit more streamlined if I do it here. Um, we're going to move this and we're going to make it center point the point where it'll be anchored to you know the countertop right now as you can see its center point is just the sort of middle of its bounding box that's what this little dot is here and right now the geometry looks pretty good uh it doesn't look overly complex um you know no i don't see a need to decimate this one necessarily um i'm going to check its back faces here so i just checked this little box called back face culling um and now we're good. It even has it even has a bottom. I was expecting this to be nothing. Like if back face uh, culling is an issue, what you'll see um, is well, I'll actually scrap action here. Um, flip it. What you'll see is like that. You'll see like a, a chunk that looks like it's missing. And if I turn off back face culling, you can see it. It looks fine. So that's just something you have to check. Programs like Blender or like modeling suites do not automatically usually have back face calling on. So you want to just check for it. All right. And then I'm going to move this into here. Probably about here is good. And I'm going to set origin to 3D cursor. And now the origin uh, point or the, the pivot point of this object is that. Um, and since it's good, I'm actually just going to export it over the OBJ file that we opened. And then I can drag and drop that into Unity. Oh, actually, you know what? Before I do that, um, I forgot to check UVs. That's something that sometimes we don't always have. So as soon as it lets me get back into it, I'll do that real quick. OK, so I'm going to check the UV editing tab. I'm going to select everything. And these are UVs that are like automatically generated. So this is something, this being like a solid metal object probably wouldn't matter too much. You wouldn't, you know, if you wanted any kind of micro detail or um, like uh, patterning or, or, you know, if it was something more complex, like say a countertop, you definitely need to fix this. Um, I'm going to do something to sort of fix it here. I'm just going to uh, unwrap it with um cube projection and then pack these uh uv islands um so they'll be they'll look a little bit better uh, it won't matter too much like i said the it being a solid metal object and that automatic cube projection is like the same virtually um I, I believe it's the same process by which you do box projection inside of unity's unwrapping tool i think it's just a slightly different name um i, I may be incorrect on that but I, I think it's virtually the same thing it pretty much just automatically finds differences in angles and it unwraps and creates islands based on that so now we're going to export it Okay, now I'm going to go back to downloads. I'm just going to overwrite this one, and I think we're good. So I'm not going to save it as a Blender file. And now that we're
Um, since everything comes through Revit and everything is basically the same scale, luckily, that means we don't, we shouldn't have to do much scaling, um, you know, between things. Uh, like once we have it in here, uh, if, you know, the, the, I mean, once it's up in Airtable after it's been processed, that scale should work every time we plop it somewhere. Um, you know, unless a specific, you know, case occurs. Uh, where is my scene settings container? Let me get probes here. There you go. So I'm going to scale it for use in this bathroom. And what I'm going to do, actually, one thing about Unity's uh, or the Unity package things is they inherit the the file structure um, based on however you pack the package. So creating uh, individual folders for these assets. So this was BAF 005 or, or was it 003? I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, for the sake of this demonstration, I don't know how important that is, but we we'll want it to be accurate. So we got our OBJ and our MTL file. Oh, wow. I've never actually seen this little 3D preview thing work. <laughs> That's funny. I'm going to drag them into this folder here. And now I'm going to drag and drop this into the scene. As you can see, it's massive. That's just a result of it coming from Blender. Now you could um, probably think to try to scale it a little bit in Blender, but it doesn't matter because we can just grab it and scale it here. And you can see I'm uh, so in Unity as well, um, up here you've got global and center. That's talking about scaling on a global factor or local factor. The local thing really only matters if it's got like a parent object. That way it's scaling relative to the parent uh, as opposed to relative to like global space. And the center, as you can see, this is that center of the bounding box that's like automatically generated. If you hit that and it turns to pivot, you can see it's where we put it. So that's the one that we manually stuck in. So, and then this might be a point where in the process, if he needs to, he might consult you, Chloe, if you think, you know, you want to direct him on exactly how um, big the faucet should look in the scene. Um, like this may be too big, it might be too small. I'm not sure. Something like this is probably okay. And so what we're going to do yeah, okay. We're going to create an empty game object. And that empty game object hit. So we're going to call the product or the, the actual thing. So I'm going to go back to Airtable. And what is this thing called? Teo single handed faucet. Copy that. We're going to call this game object that as well. We're going to make the game object scale one. Because we, uh, for the sake of automation, the placeholders are going to be one and this is going to be one. So we want that scale to match up because when it populates, it should populate at this size then. Um, the position doesn't matter. The rotation doesn't necessarily matter. Um, in fact, the rotation should probably be zero. And so that's good. Um, and then we're going to take this and we're going to move it under the object here. And you can see that the point of origin stays the same because we set it up in Blender. If we um, didn't do that, you can do that here. So I'm moving the child object. But as you can see, when I select that, the, the overall pivot point stays the same. So now if we were to do this and it was automated and set up like this, it would come in floating right above wherever the placeholder is. So that's why you want to sort of keep that in mind. Um, so now that we've called it that, we've got basically our hierarchy set up how we want to. We're just going to throw a finish on here that matches. Um, and you know, if there are provided maps, that's where this comes into play. You would import them here, and you would apply them in a material to this. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to find a sort of metal that we have. Um, Chrome, so, and we have several types of Chrome. Um, so something like this. This is also something we'd probably want to consult you on then next, Chloe. Um, if 
you know, this is maybe too shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that. I accidentally added an E to the end of that finish. I'm going to grab that. <clears throat> I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to grab that Chrome finish one. I'm going to move it over here into my BAF005 folder. And we're going to make some changes. You know, its smoothness is very high. That's why it's got an almost mirror like quality. Oh, yeah, I actually have to drag and drop it onto there. Um, now, this has some textures already on it. Um, so these are maps from other ones. And these maps will also be moved into this folder before we export. But for now, they're just sort of in among the rest of the things. Um, and that's OK. Um, because it's close enough, I don't think we really have to use any other maps. If we did, that's where we'd want to get them from Airtable. Uh, I mean, maybe this metal could be a touch darker, too. And let's say that that's then, you know, let's say that's sufficient for the the finish, and then we think this looks good. Then we have it all set up. Basically, um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a prefab, and we're gonna drag. It uh, we're going to do that by drag and dropping our object here from the hierarchy into our BAF05 folder. And so now, as you can see, there are um, there's the MTL file from the OBJ. We have the source OBJ file, which is if I just place this again, that's the raw uh, you know source model. It's too big. You know, it's like it's as if we didn't process it, and that's what the artists have sort of had to do until we get this is reprocess it or uh, until we upload that. So I'm actually going to get rid of that one. But this thing that we just created is the um, processed Unity asset. So now, as you can see, it's scaled. It's got that uh, finish on it, and it's good to go. So what I'm actually going to do is, now that I've done that, I'm going to go to Select Dependencies, and I'm going to go down to Textures, and see there are two textures that it is dependent on I don't I don't know why it didn't usually it just populates the thing with the um, with just them instead of taking you to the source folder so let me try that again there you go so as you can see it's got um, an asset versioning script the lit shader we actually you don't want to move those. Those are important to the way the, the scene functions. But we're going to grab these textures and we're going to move them into our BF or BAF005 folder. Oops, I didn't move them into the BF005 folder. I just moved them into the asset folder because I slipped. That's fine. Now we'll move them into the right one. Okay, and so now this folder contains everything we need. So if I were to hit, um, if I were to select the prefab object and export package, you can see it's exporting one folder, BAF005. It's got the OBJ source file, the MTL one, the material, the textures, and the prefab. So I'm going to hit export. I'm going to put it somewhere, and I'm going to call it the name of the thing. So I don't actually don't know if it'll let me do parentheses. OK, it did. So now it'll show me where I have it there. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to attach files. And I'm going to just drag and drop that. And I'm going to hit upload. And then basically, that is complete. So now if an artist needs to go and grab that, they grab the Unity package one with the name of the, you know, the name of the product. and uh, they import it, it'll create the BAF005 folder in their project, and they can go grab it and just place it. And they don't have to deal with any of that, uh, you know, checking on anything or setting up the material themselves or anything. So that that's basically it.